Straw Hut Media. Hey guys, it's me, Sapphire on Heartbreakers, of course. I'm going to be answering some questions for you guys, for men and women, what they're most afraid to ask. I wanted to dedicate this episode to just every question that you guys always try to ask. I know I always just answer like one or two, but this is your episode where you get most of your questions, if not all, answered. I asked this on my social media, and this is like the top ones that were most asked. And it's, what is something that you're too afraid to ask your partner about? And one of them is, what does their partner really expect from them emotionally and physically in their relationship? Are they meeting those expectations? Personally, for me, I think that you just need to straight up ask your partner what they want from you emotionally, and you need to also be transparent on what you need emotionally to tell them. It needs to be a calm conversation. I personally think that you don't need to be bringing up too much of a past relationship because once one thing is done, it's done. And then honestly, for physically in a relationship, I think that needs to be your guys' first conversation from the very beginning because there's people that are okay with having sex once a month, twice a month, every day of the week. But if you're not aligned in that way, I don't see personally a relationship even going any further if you guys are just off on that. You guys got to have that conversation from the very beginning. If you're a horny person and your partner's not, that's cool, but it just is never going to work. You'll get bored if you're someone that's, you know, wants sex all the time. And honestly, if the person isn't as sexual as you, they'll almost kind of be like, I want to say scared in a way, it doesn't allow them to open up even more to you physically. And same with emotionally. I feel like it goes hand in hand. If you're someone that talks a lot and tells your feelings how it is and your partner's more reserved, you got to try to get that person to open up, but without any pressure. You guys got to not have any pressure on your relationships. I know that I I have complications with opening up to people. I'm very shut off. That's something that I'm really working on. It's affected my relationships in the past where I'm just upset. I don't tell them and then they don't know and then they can't fix it. If you don't tell someone what's wrong, it's you're, they're unable to fix it. Um, how can you tell a girl is single and emotionally available for a relationship? That is very hard, guys, because it's up to that person, one, to be honest if they're single. And we all know how it goes these days where people just don't want to be honest about that. If that's on that person for not telling you that they're single, that's between them and whoever that person is that they're in a relationship with. But if that person really isn't single and they're telling you that they're not single, I say stay far away from it. I have learned just from the past that it does come with really bad karma if you're actively messing around with someone who isn't single. For me, like I, before I was in like committed, committed relationships, you guys all know that I honestly had no problem messing with married guys. But then when I got into a relationship where I was really in love and I really wanted the person, it hurt me so bad that they cheated on me. I mean, it was still to this day, I'm freaking traumatized from it. And if someone's emotionally available, man, I feel like you know when someone's emotionally available when they're literally telling you their emotions and when they're ready to actually tell you exactly what they want. If someone comes to you and they say like, I'm ready for this relationship right now, it's when someone kind of dances around your questions. I don't feel like they're emotionally available. And if they show any type of lack of maturity, for sure, hands down, not emotionally available. I'm super curious about non-monogamous relationships and polyamorous relationships. Can it work? Can it be done without hurting your self-worth or being self-destruction? Well, it's one thing if you're just both sleeping around with multiple people and you guys come home to each other and people always say like, oh, it's okay if my partner goes out and does this and that as long as they come home to me. I personally feel like that does hurt your self-worth. I'm not going to lie. It does lower your value. And I know a lot of people are going to really argue that. And that's just through my experiences 
I feel like if that's the relationship you're heading towards, which is non-monogamous, it needs to be both ways. And also when you're in, say, you know, you're dating a couple. So it's like a married couple and then you're added into the relationship. I actually think that's great. I think that if you're someone that has a lot going on in your life, but you want intimacy and you want to feel like desired by people, it can feel very good. But you have to be very careful of feeling like you're their accessory, like you're just at their disposal. And you got to put up clear boundaries. You got to make sure things are not one sided because it really does affect how you view yourself. Even if you're having fun, you're the girlfriend of a of a married couple. Like I said, I've done it. I had a great time, but I didn't like feeling like I was their accessory and they could just call me whenever, but then I couldn't go out and do what I wanted. Or if I wanted to get married or something like that, how does that work in with the couple that I'm already dating? I say, don't do it. (laughs) But if you're into that and you're into couples, it could be very hot. It could be very pleasing. It could Yeah, I mean, I did it for almost three months. It was a great experience and I knew that I didn't want to do it again, but I'm very thankful that I did it. It'd be good too if you were like a sugar baby to a couple. I'm not going to lie. That could really work well. Who is out of your league? Um, I'm guessing this person is asking, how do you figure if some figure out if someone's out of your league? I don't really like this question because I feel like people feel like, okay, I'm dating this person and they're better than me. They're more special than me. And again, that affects your self-worth. And also then you always feel like you can't match what they're doing. And that just doesn't exist. If that person's picking you, then they want to be with you. You don't have to feel like, oh, this person's out of my league. If you feel like you're out of their league, You got to just figure out what you want in a person, what you feel like is right for you, because you don't want to belittle that person and make them feel less of themselves because they don't match what you're doing in your life or they don't match what your energy is. I know when someone is out of my league, as I as you guys are asking, and that's if they don't aren't spiritually aligned with me. They don't have the same worth ethic as me. It's not about looks. It's about how they view themselves and how mature they are. That's someone that's out of my league. If someone's way less mature than me, it's not going to work. And if they don't work as hard and they're more of a lazy person that wants to play video games, no shame to anybody. I'm just saying that would be somebody a little bit out of my league because I don't like doing that. It makes me feel like I got to sit there with them and not work on the things that I want to work on. Or if the person don't have any ambition, for me, that's someone out of my league. And I feel like that's a lot of other people. But if you're someone that is content with your life and you find someone that's also content with their life and loves what you're doing, that's someone in your league. It's not about looks. I know a lot of people are concerned about that. Like, say you have a hot girl and you're not as hot as her. It's not about that. It's about emotionally. Okay, next question. I'm getting anxious about our future relationship, afraid of ending. I suppose, how can I handle this conversation? This is a big one. I feel like everybody, they're anxious about, okay, am I investing too much time with this person? Is it going to end? And what happens when it ends? How am I going to feel when it ends? And that is really scary. And I feel like you got to be really transparent with that person and let them know, like, these are my fears. Honestly, like the second date I go on with people now, I just tell them straight up, like, this is what I'm concerned about. This is what has happened to me. And I'm fearful of this happening again. And I really don't want this to be happening again. You got to just rip the bandaid off and ask the questions and don't be scared of the person's response because most likely if you're opening up to someone, they really value that. They really want you to continue to open up and you just got to tell them like, listen, I'm scared of this. But the problem is, is if, if you're constantly scared of a relationship ending, I feel like you can almost like speak it into existence and like almost manifest it. And you don't want that. You don't want to constantly wake up every day waiting for the relationship to end because what if it doesn't? Then you're not enjoying the days that you have with that person. I mean, it could end just by someone, you know, unfortunately passing away and you wasted all those days feeling like, okay, when's it, when's this person going to leave? And you don't enjoy your dates. You're just so anxious. You got to almost like just let that go. And you almost have to be okay with knowing that it could possibly end and just have a great, beautiful experience with that person while they're there, while they're with you. Hey. 
honestly, I'm just afraid to even ask women for their numbers these days. There's no good situation to ask a woman out anymore that could potentially lead to being labeled a creep or a weirdo. This is a big one. I'm a big advocate for this because I feel like I'm being a hypocrite right now, but I feel like women have definitely made it very hard for men to ask them out. Men are very scared now to say the wrong thing, to do the wrong thing. Men feel like they can't be they can't be themselves and The right way is to literally just say, are you single? I'd love to get your number. And if you're not, then like, I, you know, respectfully just want to tell you that you're beautiful or approach them on something that you can compliment them with. Like if you're in a workout class, like compliment them on something like that and just be like, I would love to get your number. I'd love to get to know you. The less words you use, but just very nice ones are the best way to go. I wouldn't say like, oh, you're so sexy. Even though that's very nice and personally, I would like that. Some people could be turned off. I would just stick to like very like nice words like pretty, beautiful, you know, you looked great today. I've been noticing you. And if they find you creepy by saying that, that's not your person. That's not who you want to be with. That person is just upset. They have a lot more self-work that they need to work on. How do I ask my doctor about my vaginal health and and if it is normal. Well, your doctor is there to be there when you want to ask any questions and get any information, and you're not going to find any better information that you need to know unless it's from your doctor because they know everything about you. I do think that doctors can be very tough on people, and they don't necessarily want to be doctors because I know that that is a very hard career path to take and it's very draining and I know that it can be very uncomfortable especially when something doesn't feel normal but just remember that your doctor's there for you and your doctor is there to help you and I think that you just need to be again transparent and say listen I'm having these problems I need to know if they're normal another thing that I think that people get to crazy about is googling constantly don't go in there thinking that you have 20 things wrong write down your questions but don't write down what you think is wrong with you at that time let your doctor answer that for you and don't be afraid to ask for added tests like if you feel like your doctor's not running enough blood work for you or they're not doing the tests that you need to be done feel free to ask for more. I do that all the time. I'm always like, no, no, no. I want, I just rather have all the tests. I rather just know for sure instead of constantly going back. I get that though. And when it comes to vaginal health, it could be a tricky thing. There's too much online that says certain things are normal when they really aren't. And, you know, normal things are just looked over in a way. Next question. Many women are too afraid to ask for their STD results. Guys, you have to be asking your partners if they are recently tested, if you're not going to use a condom. If you're going to bear back that shit, you got to make sure you test three days after because there's an incubation period where if you test too early, you can get a false negative on things. So this is what I've learned from the industry. You got to wait at least three days. That's why we're on a 14 day thing because you got to wait at least three days so you can get the right results. And I don't think people really know this, but there's actually a new STD out called, it's not a new one, but they've just now classified it as an STD. It's called like microplasma genitalia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Genitalium. In the industry, we call it MGen, and it's just as common as gonorrhea and chlamydia. It's very hard to treat because it's gotten so strong. It's a 14 day treatment, and that's if it works. So they're treating it with a bunch of different antibiotics. But the problem is that not many people know, and even testing places that aren't industry, they don't even think to test for this. So you just going to the doctor, you can even even Google like freestd.com. I think it's called freestdcheck.com and it will show you all of the places that you can test. You've got to test. I say test after every partner. And if you're not having a conversation with your partner, whether they're having sex with other people, you got to test 
after every single time you have sex with them. I don't care what they tell you. If you guys are not in a relationship and you don't know for sure, some things cannot be treatable. A lot of things are. And if you catch something, don't freak out. You know, it happens. Just get yourself treated. Live your life. But yeah, testing is very scary. When I first went into the industry, I was very scared about testing. I would get anxiety before my test would pop up on my phone. I'm like, is this the day something's going to pop up and be bad? And it can honestly be traumatic when you get it and it could be positive because it feels like an invasion to your like health. Like it feels like something that like somebody invaded you and it's a very scary feeling, but you've got to test after every partner, hands down. Don't forget, there's free places. They'll test you. Don't worry. A lot of insurances cover it too, but you've got to test. I tell all my new partners, I'm like, have you been tested for MGen? And they don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. And you got to teach people. I'm here to tell all of you guys it's a new STD. It's just as strong, if not stronger than gonorrhea and chlamydia and just as common. So test, test, test for that. It It's a, one of those those silent ones, too, where you don't have symptoms. You know, you guys got to test. Um, do you guys care about labia? What labia looks like? No, they do not. A pussy is a pussy. They don't care. They just want to have sex with you. I've never heard a guy comment on a girl's labia. And I know like people see that online a lot. People being like, oh, longer labia is disgusting and all that kind of stuff. And like, honestly, growing up, I really thought that mine was gross until I got to be an adult and no man has ever said anything in a negative way towards it. No vagina looks the same. It's not going to look the same. You know, genitalia in general is not, I personally don't think it's good looking, whether it's a penis or a vagina. It just doesn't look good. And you got to get past that and just know that it doesn't look the same. And a guy just wants to be there with you and have that experience. I'm telling you, once they're already in bed with you, they know that they want to be with you. It's not about your the way that your labia looks like at all. How do I approach guys I like without coming across desperate? So I think that if you're out and you see somebody, this is my favorite go-to. And this might be a little bit too aggressive for people. But if I see a guy, I think he's good looking. He's at a table with all his buddies. I will send a shot to everybody at the table. Just tequila because everybody drinks tequila. And I'll just have the waitress or the waiter tell the person that it's from me. And then I just politely wave. And then I wait for the guy to come to me and approach me. I feel like that's not desperate. If they don't come up to you, it is what it is. But I feel like they like that a little bit of dominance. If you're talking about someone that you've like met online or that you've known for a while, it's hard to look desperate unless you're too like not too forward, but if you're too disgusting with it, it comes off more desperate. Like if you're like, I want to fuck you right now. I feel like that's a little desperate. Just approach someone the way you want to be approached. I like you. I'd love to go out with you and leave it as that. I think people are more afraid of the embarrassment and the rejection more than feeling desperate. And you got to also know that there's no real embarrassment by being rejected. It's just not your person. You don't want to go out with somebody that doesn't want to go out with you and you won't know until you ask. All right, heartbreakers. Thanks for listening. See you guys next time.